I am Dr. Riazul Hassan, a visiting scholar of MIT UTM Malaysian Sustainable City Program. I am presenting two stories of development-induced displacement in Malaysia. One follows up with communities affected by a hydroelectric dam in East Malaysia. The other addresses an ongoing housing development project on the southern tip of Peninsula Malaysia. Malaysia is one of the world's fastest developing nations. Under its One Malaysia program, the government aims to be a developed country by 2025. Accordingly, federal and state governments are intensively investing in infrastructure development, especially in housing, energy, and manufacturing sectors. However, many national infrastructure development programs fail to consider indigenous poor and marginalized communities who have very limited voice in planning these mega projects. From 1980 to 1990, almost 10 million people were displaced in South Asia due to development projects like hydroelectric dams. The process known as development-induced displacement remains a global challenge for socially sustainable development planning. Sarawak, one of two Malaysian states on the island of Borneo, is a real example of development-induced displacement due to hydroelectric dams. Sarawak is home to 2.37 million people and its 27 indigenous ethnic communities speak 45 different languages. In Malaya, these indigenous groups are known as Orang Asli. Beginning in the year 1994, the Sarawak's government initiated the second largest hydroelectric dam in Asia. In the name of region-wide economic development, the dam inundated 1,700 hectares of land in the interior region of Bakun and displaced more than 10,000 Orang Asli from their home and their land. To learn more about those displaced communities, I journeyed to Bakun. These displaced indigenous communities have been relocated next to the Bintulu city on land allocated by the government, which is now known as village Sungai Asap. Before their resettlement, indigenous communities harvested their everyday needs from river and forest in Bakun. But this new location is far from their source of livelihood. Every week, many displaced villagers make a long journey to Bakun to fish and gather food from the forest. Their government-appointed village leader, Mr. Ribao, said that it was a completely new life for them after displacement. To him, the new home was a jungle, far away from the river, essential to their livelihood. It's very totally new to our all our people. It's okay. totally new. Because they are used to the way of life, they are used to the way of how they do living in the old, old place. So when we move to this new place, so you can see that all the area here is jungle. As a part of the relocation, they also claim compensation from the government. There is Bakun Development Committee, BDC. So we have a very uh, a thick book that we pass to the government so that they can study about our land, how much do they compensate for land, and how much do they compensate for the garden, rubber, paper, and so on. And what about our house? Uh, yeah. And how, how are you going to compensate the house? However, the compensation wasn't enough to start fresh in their resettlement location. Respond for this because they are using the government rate. I held three group discussions with men and women in the indigenous community to understand the challenges they faced since their relocation. Above all, interviews said the greatest challenge at the relocation site was insufficient access to land to sustain them. At least one member of every family travels back to the dam areas for the daily intake needs two hours drive from their new location. This travel is costly and also raises their daily living cost. To compensate, some have started living semi-permanently in the dam area, collecting food under compromised living condition while their families remain in the new settlement areas. Aijun Nong is one of the indigenous people who moved to the dam area to minimize her family's living cost and harvested food from the rivers. Uh, half an hour from here to their house. Back in the settlement area, some elders feel isolated and have no bond with the community since becoming displaced. 
then Ningo is one of them. After being displaced for 16 years, the villagers now settle into normal daily routines. But they are still struggling to subsist only on their new lands and improve condition for the next generations. On the southernmost tip of peninsular Malaysia, an ongoing story of development-induced displacement is unfolding. Iskandar Malaysia, a regional development authority in the state of Johor, is aiming to house 3 million people by 2025. One of the region's largest new housing projects, Country Garden in Dangabe, is being built in a biodiverse coastal areas between two rivers, within an aim to accommodate about 9,000 new residents. Country Garden is an eviction threat for the indigenous people living in Dangabe area for hundreds of years. The project pushed them to the edge of the development boundary and left no other options for them but to displace. Mr. Noor Hisham, director of Iskandar Malaysia, knows about the indigenous history of Dangabe. The waterfront development is also where we have the fisherman village mm -hmm. and we have the indigenous uh, group which is called Orang Seleta. Uh, the British used to call them like sea gypsy. In the questions of land right, Hisham says, Not enough to capture with this growing community. So whether they like it or not, it's just a matter of time. They still have to be relocated uh, to the other area. I asked him what alternatives are available. The land that we set is belong to third parties. So we only got two choices. It's either we gazetted the area okay. or we have to relocate them to other areas. It's not that easy for us to gazette at their current land, as I mentioned. These are growing community. And, uh, maybe for start, uh, 100 or 150 families is sufficient for you to, to reside the area. But now as the community grow double or triple, we still have to think a better plan. We also need to be realistic. We're not talking about 50 years ago, 60 years ago, where we have abandoned of land on sea fronting. Mm -hmm. Indigenous community leader Eddie Salim also says land right and displacement are long-standing issues. Sebelum ni pun banyak juga uh, tanah orang asli dah diambil oleh kerajaan untuk pembangunan sebagainya kan. Jadi orang asli tanah tu bukan makin besar makin kecil. Jadi orang asli nak to his community the country garden project was unexpected. Yang kita tahu daripada pihak Iskandar ataupun pihak daripada kerajaan tidak dimaklumkan pada masyarakat orang asli sekalipun. Yang apa kita tahu hari ini kita yang kita tahu berlaku uh, pokok bakau ditebang. They protested and reported the land occupation to the police. Lepas tu kami memberitahu daripada pihak kontraktor, dia memberitahu dia daripada syarikat Dangabe. Apa yang berlaku yang saya lihat kawasan orang asli di di Cerobo dan kami ada buat satu uh, masyarakat orang asli ada buat satu laporan report polis mengatakan uh, inilah pekuburan orang asli, inilah adalah kawasan orang asli. Mr. Selim Alauddin, a leader among local fishermen, also suffered due to the reclamation process. Dan kerajaan sendiri pun kita bukan tak ada nak buat kan. Pucuk pangkalnya sini tengok sedang buat tempat ni kita tamak sendiri. Tak ada apa bagi dia bagi orang semua orang kita buat sendiri. Ha, contoh nak buat ikut tourism kita dah sendiri dah ada pengasas memang. Kita minta supaya tempat sini buat satu apa, tarikan pelancongan untuk untuk masyarakat orang asli. Ha, kita memang ada minta. According to Dr. Colin G. Nicholas, Director of Center for Orang Asli Concern. In Malaysia, resettlement or relocation can never be a solution for displaced indigenous communities. 
first thing that happens in the recycling scheme is we break down the social structure. See, indigenous peoples are not, are not interested in land. They are interested in the traditional land and the culture. Across the river from Danga Bay, the Skanda Development Authority has produced an ecotourism development plan for Kampung Sungai Malayu, a village for traditional Malay people known as Bhumi Putras. However, the authority has no corresponding development plan for the indigenous village in Danga Bay. Incorporating this community into the Kampung Sungai Malayu plan could prevent its displacement and protect its indigenous culture and tradition. The village currently operates a cultural heritage center, which villagers believe could be launched pad for a similar ecotourism development strategy. Recognizing the inevitability of development and displacement, communities often have generative ideas about how to mitigate its social impacts. Engaging in participatory planning with the indigenous community could sustain the land, livelihood and culture for them and for the following generations. Thank you.